Now, how does an IPS work? So here's a quick topology overview. We got an internet connection terminated on an edge router, which has an IPS sitting behind it and a switch. And we have a desktop plugged into that switch. The first thing that IPS does is it downloads a database of exploit signatures. It's very similar to antivirus on a computer. So if you got an antivirus on your computer, you know it goes and downloads updated signatures. So it learns about any type of viruses. Now, one key concept to keep in mind here, guys, before I move forward is NIDS versus HIDS. Now, what does NIDS stand for? NIDS stands for Network-Based Intrusion Detection System. And this was a previous generation of IPS. IPS initially started out as IDS, which is Intrusion Detection System but later it became Intrusion Prevention System, or IPS. Because IDS is just a dog that barks, but IPS is actually a dog that not only barks, but can also bite. That's the difference, okay? So that's why IPS ended up becoming mainstream. Now back to the difference between the two. So IPS is a network-based intrusion detection system, whereas antivirus on your computer is considered a host-based intrusion detection system, or HIDS. That's the big difference. The second thing that IPS does is exploit signatures define different header field values. So you know how we have packets, and those packets have headers at layer 3, layer 4. All these different layers have different headers and within those headers we have different fields. IPS looks at the exploit signatures and compares them against the different well-defined header fields and looks for anomalous behavior. It basically compares packets to the known exploit signatures at the end of the day. And packets that match those signatures are logged and discarded. Okay, so IPS says, this traffic is bad. Not only I'm going to deny that traffic, but I'm also going to log it. So it can be later on analyzed by a security expert to see what's really going on. And IPS can also send this traffic to another security appliance for further analysis. And finally, you may be asking yourself, what are exploit signatures and what do they exactly do? So here's the answer. Exploit signatures protect against the following types of attacks. Denial of service attacks, distributed denial of service attacks. They protect against worms and viruses and zero day attacks. So zero day attack is an interesting concept if you're not familiar with zero day attacks. When a brand new attack shows up in the wild, and machines start getting infected. Well, it's a zero day attack because there is no protection against it and it's a brand new attack and nobody has ever seen it before. Hence the name zero day. From the time that attack happens until a protection is made available, there is a lag that occurs and that lag is typically a bad thing. So if you think about it, let me give you another perspective of thinking about this. Let's say this machine right here has an antivirus. Let's say it has Symantec antivirus running on, on this desktop. Could be any, but Symantec is good as any. Now, if you think about it, typically when a zero-day attack happens, ZDA, right, comes through the internet, makes it through our router, makes through our IPS switch, makes it to that machine. And that antivirus that's running here, unless it has the latest updates, it's none the wiser and it will the machine may get infected, right? And then we'll have to wait a couple of hours or probably a couple of days before that update is made available. But as you can see, this is pretty scary because that malicious traffic was allowed through the entire network infrastructure for it to be able to make to make it to our machine. Now, what network-based intrusion prevention system does, which in this case is our IPS here, is it says, how about I kill that traffic right here before it even has the ability to infect machines on the inside of the local area network? So catch the traffic as early as possible. That's the purpose in life of an IPS. 
instead of allowing that traffic to get to the machine, and if it gets infected, it might be too late. And you may be in really, really terrible shape if that happens. But with an IPS, we have the ability to proactively and in real time deal with that traffic. And typically, IPS is a lot more efficient at detecting variations in packet headers and application signatures than an antivirus on a machine. Because think of an antivirus as more of a reactive solution compared to an IPS, which is more of a proactive solution. Now, before I talk about the next generation IPS, I'm gonna first talk through the challenges with the traditional IPS. So here's a quick topology overview. We got internet connected to an edge router that has an IPS connected to it, and IPS has a switch connected to it. IPS compares all packets against a signature database which lists all known exploits. As a result of this, what IPS does is it generates a lot of events and logs. And this is to the point that if you think of things from a security operation center perspective or SOC perspective, the security staff gets overwhelmed by just looking at the sheer number of events that are happening in the environment. And then to analyze and evaluate and then do something about it, it's a tall order. So ultimately SOC engineers are expected to find a needle in the haystack because if you got hundreds of thousands or millions of logs being generated and now your engineers are trying to see if there is, if any of those logs actually correspond to it an attack, I mean, that is insane, right? So that's what they're doing. They're, le they're looking for a proverbial needle in the haystack. Now, this is not a big deal in, a, in small environments, but when you look at large enterprise networks, this could take an absolute toll on the security engineers and may lead to security incidents because if you're trying to find that needle in the haystack, who knows how long it might take you to find that needle? And while you're trying to find that needle, the bad guys may get into your network and take control of your environment. And it may be too late by the time you find out that there was an actual attack. So what's the solution to that? We need a next generation IPS. Now let's talk through the traditional IPS versus next generation IPS. Traditional IPS includes things like signature-based packet analysis like we talked about before, right? So we have a signature database and then as each packet comes in, we look at the header of that packet and we analyze it and make sure it doesn't match the database. If it does match the database, we're gonna do something with that traffic. Most likely we're gonna deny that traffic. We're also gonna log that traffic. So that's called event logging. And traditional IPS could also redirect those packets to another security appliance for further analysis. Now here's a couple of features of the next generation IPS in contrast to the traditional IPS. We got, once again, application visibility and control. Very similar to the next generation firewall. Here, we're looking at things from, once again, application layer, layer seven perspective with the sole purpose of identifying the application. The next big thing, and this is the biggest element of the next generation IPS, is the contextual awareness. So you need to understand what's really going on. To generate logs that are relevant, we first need to gather data from the hosts. And each host has an operating system running on it. There's a particular software version or revision. We have patches that are applied, applications that are running on that operating system any open ports, et cetera. This provides a 360 degree overview of what's really going on with each host in our, in our environment. We can then use this data point for all of the endpoints in our network to de-emphasize checks for exploits that do not apply to those endpoints. So why do we do that? You may be thinking, okay, what does that even mean? What that means is ultimately next generation IPS only wants to focus on stuff that's relevant to your network and not, so for example, if you're only using Windows operating system in your environment, there's no point for your firewall to do inspections on 
Apple iOS and Mac OS and all that, right? It doesn't need to do that because you only have Windows operating system in your environment. So that helps next generation IPS cut back on all these events and all that that it needs to generate and be more laser focused on what it needs to do. And it also helps your security staff because now they don't need to look at a million different logs because they're only looking at relevant stuff. The next big thing is reputation-based filtering. So like I talked about earlier, filtering based on Cisco Talos assigned reputation score. So we talked through this. It's a reputation-based system that looks at known good domains, known bad domains, email servers, bad email servers. It's looking at all those things and it assigns certain scores and those scores represent a reputation. And based on that reputation, the IPS can make certain calls. And finally, the next generation IPS provides what's called event impact level. Next generation IPS provided assessment based on impact level for the security operation center. So the whole idea is if there's an event happening, instead of the security engineer trying to figure out whether or not it may be an actual attack, the next generation IPS, because it has a lot of intelligence and contextual awareness, it can also tag certain events as a potential attack because of all that intelligence. And this way, the security staff can then jump into those events and focus 100% and rule out whether or not it's an actual security incident taking place. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.